performance with Mar I was, they were, Don was like, it's your read. And I was reading this to bring to you. <laughs> I was like, you're next, Bobby, you're so next. <laughs> I was actually paying attention. The Washington Post, uh, the, here's the first paragraph of their big in excess inventory. My groceries still feel a lot more expensive. It's too soon to declare victory over inflation. Okay. And I think the, the, the takeaway here is inflation is moderating, and that is what we want to see. Car prices still are a problem because there's such pent-up demand for these new cars. They didn't have the right chips. But used car prices are starting to see some relief. And in housing and rent, it's going up but not going up as quickly. That's why I don't want to declare victory, especially on that part of the inflation story. Yeah. Still going up, but not going up. It's always taught they lose a lot of money. You probably have. No, no, no? I, I think I bought I, I actually bought my lease. I had a lease from 2019. This math never, ever works for consumers, right? <laughs> nope. I bought my lease. That car is worth more three years old, right, than it was the contract that I signed for really? it in 2019. Wow. wow. That's one of the only few consumer money moves you can make over the past three years that has been just a total slam dunk. I was shocked to have the price of cars increasing during uh, the pandemic. All the games this weekend, soccer, and football, there was a lot of chicken wing demands because I watched in a chicken wing. <laughs> a chicken wing. The price goes up and I still pay. It is like, it is impervious to, uh, price impervious for me. If I'm with it costs you. more, I'll pay for it anyway. I love my chicken wings. I'm with you on that. Thanks, <laughs> Roman. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Correspondent Christine Romans, who knows all about <laughs> this. Um, I said, look, I don't know. Am I going too far by saying good morning to you? Good morning. Is inflation peaked? Is that look in terms of gas prices in the near term? Yes. I mean, you had more than five dollars a gallon this summer, and we are far, far from concerns about slowing demand in the U.S. Uh, next year. So futures markets have been a little bit cool. But this is all good news for anybody who's filling up at the gas. 3 a.m. to check the gas prices when they updated. <laughs> A big question though has been about diesel, because that is also how good a little bit faster than diesel prices, but those are also showing signs of peaking as well. So that's incredibly important. Now, one of the things that can be sort of the, the downside, if I could say this, of, of lower gas prices, sometimes they fall because you're worried about a recession. Yeah. So they're falling for the wrong reasons. You know, they were very low during the pandemic. That's because we were in the middle of a pandemic. And sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you know, gas prices are up so much from that pandemic low of $1.85. Well, you don't want low gas prices because the economy is crashing, right? <laughs> Christine Romans, we really appreciate that. Thank nice you so to much. See you. And we're standing by right now. Has more. Good morning. Yes, good morning. It's hey. not a good day. So how, how and when, they're going to find out through email, but when? Yeah, so 9 a.m., you know, East Coast, West Coast time or noon East Coast time. And if you're, if you're going to keep your job, you're going to get a, an email on your Twitter email. And if you lose your job, kind of, they're expecting thousands of, uh, thousands of these. That You know, they sent out a note. Yesterday, they closed all the offices. They said, if you're in the office, go home. If you're on your way to a Twitter office, uh -huh. don't come in, mm -hmm. and you'll be getting an email to tell you whether you're going to have a job or not on Friday. So it's a, the Twitter email, not like Twitter, Twitter, but their yeah, Twitter they're, they're, company you know, email. Yeah, if your employment yeah. is not impacted, some lawsuits from these employees yeah. who work there there's, now. There's a suit filed um, in San Francisco that they didn't give enough warning time. There are laws, local laws, California laws, and federal laws that you have to give people notice, and some of these laws are up to 60 days. A similar lawsuit against Tesla Elon Musk just dismissed and said it was trivial, so he, he probably won't care about that lawsuit. But it is employees trying to say, hey, you can't just do this so quickly. Speak to so these he has complained. Employees. He has complained via, via Twitter this weekend that there seem to be 10 managers for every one coder. And he wants coders and engineers, and he doesn't seem to value the leadership and the management. So I think, I think we can deduce that that is where you will see a lot of people lose their jobs. He wants coders and engineers. Okay. We're going to see what Elon Musk's Twitter is going to look like. I mean, this is a make or break day, really. I mean, he's going to probably cut half of the workforce. He is mused about having a workforce more like 3,000 employees instead of 7,500 employees. This would probably take Twitter's size of employees back to where it was when it went public, you know, when wow. it, way, way. Do you remember those right, days? Right, 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 <laughs> a long time ago. And, you know, he, he's talked about charging $8 a month for a, a check to verify who you are. You know, the, the verified check is what, how you, we're going to find out what his Elon Musk's Twitter will look like. And today is a very important day in that. Also, what's so fascinating about that to me is the Twitter is to see okay, what they're saying. To follow Caitlin Collins. Not to follow yes. me, but I'm saying to follow <laughs> LeBron James. Yeah, to follow yeah. The idea of charging them is um, interesting. So interesting. Well, well, eight of the past 10 years, the company has lost money, right? So he has probably overpaid for this company. He's got to find ways to make money. Right? Yeah. And that's cutting that's employees what, and charging. And being hyperbolic on Twitter. Yeah, it's exactly. A, it's an audience. Yeah. Christine yeah. Romans yeah. will be watching closely yep. for those thousands of people who are getting that email today. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so your chief business correspondent, Christine Romans, is with us. Business
correspondent Rahel Solomon. So, Christine, this is the we've been saying all morning. They want a Goldilocks. Yeah. You want a positive number, but not too much because we're, we got to grapple with this right. inflation. So we have 261,000 net new jobs added in the period, which is a little, I think, a little hotter than That's people hot. thought. I yeah. mean, in normal times, that would be a lot of jobs created. 3.7 percent is the unemployment rate, so it went up a little bit, but still near that you know, 50-year low. So this is one of those stories. I guess that you could say that is maybe a little goldy. It's a very critical time politically and for the country because people are going to be deciding who their leaders are. And the White House, as you know, they are a little bit nervous. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a critical time. Political sports, of course, uh, since then, as they make borrowing more expensive. So we all knew, Christina and I have talked about quite a bit, that at some point... response to this, do you think? You know, I'd have to look at wages. I'd have to look at labor force participation. But this... Hot any other time. You know, any other time, you'd be like, that's so many jobs. But we've been on two or three million jobs a year. We've already really been far above Is that. Is this Goldilocks? I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to say what's happening in the job market when you look under the hood because we have so many jobs that are still open. The Fed needs to see the job market cool down a little bit so it doesn't start to spin off other inflation and get inflation entrenched. Do you think it's Goldilocks? And Goldilocks is not too fast, well, not too slow. you know, right? I'm trying to remember the op-ed figure. So are we there yet? No. Are we sort of getting close to uh, the 500,000 jobs that we added earlier this year in January? These headlines, like above the fold in the papers today, Amazon. Yeah. yeah. They're stopping, mm -hmm. you know, basically pausing a, a lot of but their after corporate hiring, hiring. like crazy. No, I hear you. Right. But I mean, I, I am seeing, we are seeing, listening to yeah. these CEOs saying Lyft also, mm. uh, Twitter's a different animal, yeah. why they're doing the layoffs. But these companies are responsible for sure. But I was talking to an economist earlier today who said, you know, it's not fair to say um, that there are that there, there's real weakness in the job market. You have to look hard to find the exceptions, which is the weakness in the job market. It's still very bad. Yeah. But I want to ask you about something that Corinne Jean-Pierre, the press sure. secretary at the White House, said just right before this jobs report came out. Do you that the White House is not preparing for a recession? Well. Look, the wor something worse is happening right now, 8.2% inflation. Yeah. That's what they're really worried about. And they're spinning in circles trying to figure out to do everything they can. They don't have a lot of levers to do for, for the inflation. I mean, I think the people who are calling for a recession are still calling for a relatively mild and shallow recession. Even Larry Summers said, oh, and by the way, if we get a recession, it won't be for anything else. But I know they said this. I think... Look, parsing words here, but she said they're not heading aware of what the, the headwinds are and, and also, what's I happening mean, here. I think but let me just get this in. Like, I think... What we have been saying is that coming out of COVID, we don't really have the metrics exactly. to measure this new exactly. economy. COVID broke the charts. Thank you. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to read. Right. You know, they don't yeah. really know exactly. I think it was Jason Furman, an economist, who, who said recently, it's true, right? Because think about what the pandemic did. It, they're still spending because they have a, a cushion, right? So the pandemic did really strain midterms, and we are talking about the number one issue by a mile. Right. We're seeing right. on voters' minds. Absolutely. And then when they go to the grocery say. store, the bills, bills are higher. Gas, the gas, price the gas tank, train, the way people feel, then that becomes real. Yep. Just bouncing off that, I know we talked about what the White House is. The smartest yes. things we heard this morning was from Frank Luntz, where he said it's not necessarily about inflation or the jobs. It's about, right. a, look, it's weird. You're right. We have low unemployment. But yet people can't find jobs. It's just, it's so We've odd. never seen anything like it. Thank, th thank you both. Both. Great, great, great. Appreciate it. Thank just, uh.